Okay, hey, welcome to the shop. We're working on a boat. It's a channel where we share tips and tricks to help you working on your boat and to have a great time while you do it. The jokes are campy, the production value is cheap, but the information is priceless. So, so stay tuned. My name's Eric with New Point Marine. Grab your tool bag. Let's work on a boat. All right, so hey, welcome to the shop. Uh, we are working on a boat. Uh, it's October again, uh, fire prevention month, one of my favorite times of year. And uh, I really wanted to do a video this month uh, with the fire prevention theme in mind. And uh, a little serendipity, uh, we actually got asked to install this. Uh, this is a pre-engineered fixed fire suppression system and we're going to be installing this one into a really neat uh, diesel electric hybrid boat. We're going to put this into the engine space to protect it and uh, I thought before we install all the components of the system uh, we could maybe put them on the bench here, have a look, do a little show and tell and talk about the different parts of the system and how they all work together to protect our boat and why it's an important thing. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, talk about uh, pre-engineered fixed fire suppression systems today. Now, uh, let's talk about the bottle itself. Um, so our bottle here, big red bottle, uh, this is holding our extinguishing agent, which is liquefied and held under pressure within the bottle. Now these come in a lot of different sizes. You can get them from very small up to massive uh, systems for really big spaces. Uh, this one, I believe, is sized for 300 cubic 350 cubic feet, so um, it's a fairly small space. So how do we measure for that? Um, if we go to our engine room and or our space that we want to protect, and we measure from length, the lowest point to the highest point, and the widest point to the widest point, and we get length times width times height, and that gives us cubic footage. Now we are allowed to deduct uh, the space occupied by permanently affixed tankage, and then uh, we can use that number to size our bottle. Okay, so this particular bottle does have a manual discharge and a automatic discharge feature to it. So uh, you might ask yourself, well, how does it know? How does it know there's a fire? How does it know to discharge automatically? Well, uh, I'm going to bring you over closer in just a minute, but right in here at the head of the bottle, there is a little device, a little glass vial, that will, at a preset temperature, rupture and let the plug that's holding the extinguishing agent inside the bottle, it'll let that out. So um, basically what's going to happen is once the area right here around the, the head of the bottle, the bottle or the nozzle reaches about 175 degrees Fahrenheit, that little glass vial is going to rupture, let that plug fly away and release the uh, extinguishing agent into our space. And flood the space, smother a small fire, we hope. So uh, I'm going to come over and uh, we'll get up close and uh, have a look and action. All right, so here we are, we're up close to the head of the bottle or the nozzle. And uh, if you look right here, you'll see an arrangement that looks very much like a uh, sprinkler head that you'll see in a commercial building. And uh, it functions very much the same. Right here, is a little vial that I was speaking of earlier where if this vial heats up to a certain temperature it'll rupture allow the plug here to fly away the extinguishing agent will be released hit the diffuser here and then flood the space now attached here this little lever this is for a manual release manual discharge cable right there and uh, we'll talk more about how that attaches in just a minute uh, over here pressure switch that will activate our engine shutdown system so that we shut down the engines, generator, blower, anything that's moving air around in the space. And more on that in a minute. And on the other side of the bottle is our gauge, our pressure gauge, which will show us whether the bottle is or is not pressurized. It will tell you pressurized with what, just that it is or is not pressurized. All right, let's talk a little bit about where we're going to mount this thing. If we have a space that we want to protect and we've done our math of the cubic footage and we have the bottle appropriately sized, uh, how do we want to mount this in that space? Well, we want the bottle to be mounted as high as possible. Because like I said, to activate this automatically, we need to have a temperature point right here on this particular bottle at 175 degrees before this is going to discharge. Now, if you can discharge automatically, excuse me. So 
you can imagine that uh, heat rises. So we want this to discharge early in the fire stage. So we want the head of this bottle up high where the heat is going to accumulate. So if we have it mounted down flat on the deck, uh, it's going to take a lot longer for that heat to come down and reach a point where it will set the bottle off automatically. So we want this up high. Um, the other consideration is we don't want this to be mounted near anything that is ordinarily hot or routinely hot, such as uh, a turbocharger, uh, dry stack exhaust, or the dry side of our exhaust, uh, because if we're our turbo or our exhaust is here, there's a good chance that we're going to reach 175 degrees right here. Uh, also, some of the higher output alternators get incredibly hot when they're working hard, so we don't want this near that uh, very hot alternator. Well, let's say uh, we have a fire and our bottle discharges automatically. Our little pellet ruptures, we reach that temperature point, extinguishing agent is released into the engine, into, into the space. We want that extinguishing agent to stay in that space and have time to smother the fire. So we don't want our extinguishing agent to leave that area. We want it to stay right there. So uh, that is where this comes in. This is an engine shutdown relay. Now, what this does is we attach those things in our engine room, which are typically our, our engines, our generator, and our blowers. And we run those through a relay box. And if the bottle discharges, our pressure switch sends that signal to the relay, shuts down the engines, the blowers, the generator, anything that can remove the extinguishing agent from the space before it has time to extinguish the fire. So uh, say our diesel engines uh, will inhale this extinguishing agent and send it right off the exhaust before it even has time to smother a fire. Or our blowers, if they're carrying hot air out, they can carry this out with it and we don't smother the fire. We just send our extinguishing agent out. So, so this is an important thing. Uh, this also comes with this. This is a little helm display that attaches here. We have two connections, upper helm, lower helm, if you will. And uh, this, if the bottle is discharged, the relay box is activated. Uh, this will give us a red LED. And we have a little buzzer here, so we'll get an audible alarm along with it. Uh, oh, this also is a uh, little green LED that signals the bottle is good. Red, the bottle has discharged. And we have a little button there, which is an override, so that if there is an accidental discharge of the bottle, and the systems are shut down, we can override it and continue on our way. Okay, so now we're down to probably the last and probably my most favorite uh, piece of the system. That is uh, this. This is a manual pull cable for our automatic system. Uh, you might say, why, why would I need a manual pull cable for my automatic system? That's a good question. Uh, the situation can arise to where you have a fire in the protective space and you recognize that, but you recognize that before the temperature has gotten to the point right here where the bottle will discharge automatically. So you know there's a fire on board, but you have to you have to kind of stand by and wait a few minutes for the fire state to get to a point where the temperature heats up here, the fire gets worse before this will discharge. Uh, you don't want to wait for that. So um, the manual pull cable is one of my favorite things. And uh, a little story to go along with that. Uh, some years ago we were involved in repairing a boat that had an engine room fire. And the situation was the fire bottle was mounted low in the engine space between the engines. And on top of one of the engines a braided stainless steel oil line going to the turbocharger uh, ruptured. The oil hit the stainless steel braid, was atomized, and sprayed onto the hot turbocharger, which started a fire. Well, the bottle's down here, the fire is up here. The owner recognized that there was a fire on board from the smoke coming out of the uh, vents and out of the exhaust, but uh, the bottle had not discharged yet. So it was, they had to stop the boat and wait 
and uh, he said that was probably the longest few minutes of his life waiting for that fire to get big enough to set the bottle off. So had he had an Emmanuel pull cable on board, he could have pulled that as soon as he recognized as a fire. Uh, pull the cable, bottle would discharge, shut down the engines, smother a fire, small fire. So uh, anyway, that is uh, that's our show about uh, pre-engineered fixed fire suppression systems. Uh, wonderful things. I'm a big fan of these. So um, anyway, until um, next time, uh, keep working on your boat.